Hello again, Math 10 Cs. In today's lesson, we're going to use our knowledge gained from the previous lessons in the unit, which was all about solving a system of linear equations, which we started the unit off by doing it graphically. Then we looked at two different methods. We could do this algebraically, one method called substitution, one method called elimination uh, to solve the system of equations. And now that we know how to do this, we're going to apply this knowledge to word problems. As you can see here, uh, we have a little bit of a rough flow chart that explains how to solve a word problem. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll start off with example number one and I'll make reference to the flow chart as I, as I begin to go through this. Now, the big difference between uh, solving a system of equations in one of the previous lessons to solving it in a word problem is that you don't have the equations. You have to build the equations, make the equations based on the information that's provided in the problem. In order to do that, though, the first thing you must do is you need to read the information and you have to pick some variables, a couple of variables that represent two things that you do not know. If you look at the first example, it says the difference between two numbers is nine. The larger number is three more than twice the smaller number. Now, the immediate problem here is you don't know what the larger number is and you don't know what the smaller number is. Okay, that, that's the point of the, the question is you've got to figure out what those numbers are. Because we don't know the larger number or the smaller number, we're going to use variables to represent these two unknowns. So the first step you want to do is you want to introduce variables to represent unknown values. Therefore, I'm going to say let x equal my smaller number. And y is equal to my larger number. Once you introduce the variables, then you need to read the problem. And based on like the information provided in the sentences, you need to form a mathematical equation. So let's start off with this first part here. It says the difference between the two numbers is positive nine. A difference means subtraction. Now, if you're going to subtract the two numbers and get a positive difference, it means you need to take the larger number, subtract the smaller one. So my first equation would be the larger number, which is y, subtract the smaller number, which is x, and that needs to be equal to 9. Okay, so if you just look at the equation and try to make sense of it, y, which is the larger number, subtract x, which is a smaller number, would have a difference that is positive 9. I'm just going to rewrite this equation a, a little bit differently because when we want to set equations up to solve them with elimination, we like to write down the equations in the format ax plus by is equal to c. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make the y and the x flip, flip spots. So if I make them flip spots, you would then have negative x plus y is equal to positive 9. And I'm going to go ahead and box this equation. And we're going to call this equation number one. Now we need to read the second sentence and we need to form another equation. Okay, you need two equations here. If you have two variables you're solving for, you need two equations to be able to solve that. Okay, it says the larger number, okay, so the larger number is y is equal to, it says three more than, three more than something would just be addition of three. So three plus, and then twice the smaller number. Twice the smaller number would be two multiplied by X. So what this sentence says is the larger number Y is equal to three more, three plus, two times a smaller number, which is X. So if I write that out, it would be y is equal to 3 plus 2 times x. And let's get it in the format ax plus by is equal to c. 
So what I'll do is I'll make the Y and the three switch spots. So if uh, we go ahead and do that, subtract three from both sides, subtract Y from both sides, and then you'd be left with, okay, I'll, I'll write the right-hand side first. So you, on the right-hand side, you would then have 2X minus Y would be equal to negative 3. I'm going to box this equation, and I'm going to call it equation number 2. Now that you've built your two equations, we solve the problem just like we would have done in one of the, the previous lessons algebraically. I'm going to use elimination. So I'm going to stack these two equations on top of each other. So I'll write down the first equation, which is negative x plus y is equal to positive 9. And then the second equation, which is 2x minus y is equal to negative 3. This is actually a really easy uh, system to solve because we don't have to multiply the top or the, the the top equation or the bottom equation by any number to eliminate a variable we can eliminate the variable y if we just add the two the two equations together so if i add them together negative x and 2x would give you positive 1x or x positive y and negative y would give you zero and then 9 plus negative 3 would just be 9 subtract 3 which is going to be 6. Therefore, you'd have x is equal to 6. Okay, that's your smaller number. Now, to get the larger number of y, all I need to do is take this value of x and plug it into one of my two equations. Uh, I'd always plug it into the equation that's a little bit easier to manipulate for your variable y. Uh, I think that the first equation is a little bit easier to deal with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say sub x equals 6 into equation one to get y. Okay, so equation one is negative x plus y is equal to nine. And I'm gonna do the following substitution. I'm going to replace x with six. So if I do that, it would be negative 6 plus y is equal to 9. And then to get y by itself, all I need to do is add 6 to both sides of the equation. So add 6 and then add 6. And then you have y would be equal to 15, which is the larger number. So, so again, the big the big difference is we're uh, uh, you have to build the two equations. Once you make the two equations, then it's just like solving a system of equations uh, as we did in the previous lessons. Okay, let's go to another example. So that was like uh, one dealing with unknown numbers. This one's more of a geometry problem. All right, so it says the perimeter of a rectangle is forty meters. Uh, the width is four meters less than the length find the dimensions of the rectangle. So again, the first thing you should immediately do is identify what's the information you do not know. Okay, I don't know what the width is and I don't know what the length is. So those are gonna be my two variables I'm going to introduce. So we're gonna say let, I'll say let w equal the width and let l equal the length. You can choose whatever variables you want as long as you just you, you keep them within the problem and just stay consistent. I could pick X and Y for length and width or, uh, but I, I like to just do W and L just to, just because there's abbreviations of the actual words. Okay, let's deal with this first part of the, the sentence first. It says the perimeter is 40 meters. Now, if you draw a rectangle, okay, so the rectangle would have a length here, a length there, it'd have a width here, it'd have a width there. So if I'm writing down the perimeter, so the perimeter would be equal to two times the length plus two times the width. 
Now, I already know what the perimeter is, though, so I don't need to leave uh, the perimeter as an unknown variable because it flat out tells me in the question it's 40 meters. Therefore, I can write down 2 times the length plus 2 times the width would be equal to 40. That's my first equation. So I'm going to box that, and we're going to call it equation number 1. Okay, second equation, we have to read this uh, second sentence. Okay, so it just tells me the width is four meters le less than the length. Okay, so that, that's pretty easy to write. So what it's saying here is the width would be equal to four meters less than the length. So that would be uh, your length subtract four. Okay, width is four, uh, whatever the length is, minus four. Okay, so our second equation we can just write down here. It would be W is equal to the length minus 4. But I want to write everything in the, in this case right here, uh, I, I want everything to be written in the same format. So I'd want to write in the form like AL plus BW is equal to the constant. So I'm going to move everything over to the side of the equation that has the L on it. So to do that, we're just going to make the W and the uh, negative 4 switch spots. So we're going to add negative 4, add negative 4, minus W, minus W, and then I would get uh, the length minus the width is equal to 4. We're going to box that equation, and we're going to call it equation number two. Let's stack the two equations. So we'd have 2L plus 2W is equal to 40. And then length minus width is equal to 4. Now, this time around, I, I can't just add or subtract the two equations to eliminate a variable, but I can just multiply one of the equations by something so I can eliminate a, a variable. So what I'm going to do here is if I take the second equation and multiply by two, so we'll go two, multiply by the second equation, then this would look like, so let's do it down here, You'd have 2L plus 2W is equal to 40. And then you'd have 2 times L is 2L uh, minus 2 times W is equal to 2 times 4 would be 8. Now, if you add the two equations, it'll eliminate the width. If you subtract the two equations, it'll eliminate the length. So it actually doesn't matter which one you do. You're going to eliminate a variable either way. Uh, I'll just add the equations. I don't have to worry about dealing with any negatives. So let's add these two equations together. Uh, Adding is a bit easier because we subtract. You have to worry about subtracting a negative. So if I add these two together, it'd be 2L and 2L would be 4L. 2W and negative 2W would be plus 0. And then 40 plus 8 would be 48. Okay, so now I'd have 4L is equal to 48. Okay, to get L by itself, I'm going to divide by 4. I'm going to divide by 4. The 4 is a cancel. And then you'd be left with L is equal to 12. And because the problem has units, I should actually clarify the units as well. So I can write down 12 meters. Now we need the width as well. So once you get the length, you can just plug it back into one of the two equations to figure out what the width is. Uh, probably a little bit easier to figure out the width in equation two because it doesn't have a numerical coefficient in front of it. Well, I guess it does. It has a negative one in front of it. We'll just sub it into equation two. So we'll sub L equals 12 into 
equation number 2 to get W. Okay, so if we go ahead and do that, my equation is L minus W is equal to 4. And we're going to replace L with 12. So then I'd have 12 minus W is equal to 4. Let's get the W by itself. So to do that, we're going to subtract 12 from both sides of the equation. So minus 12, minus 12. And then you would have W is equal to 4, uh, negative W. Okay, you've got that negative there, is equal to 4 minus 12, which is negative 8. If you want to get rid of the negative, you just have to divide both sides of the equation by negative 1. So divide negative 1, divide negative 1. That would make the negatives cancel off. And then you would have W is equal to 8 meters. Okay, and that's the solution to that problem. Okay, let's look at a couple more to deal with uh, some money applications. Let's have example three and we have example four. Uh, yeah. Okay, it says Gary has a total of $260 in $5 bills and $10 bills. If he has 33 bills in total, how many of each denomination does he have? Okay, so what it really wants you to do here is it wants it's asking you how many $5 bills and how many $10 bills do they have? Okay, so that's going to be my two unknown variables. So I'm going to say let, we'll say x equal the number of $5 bills. And then y equal the number of $10 bills. Okay, so let's form two equations to represent this. Now, let's do the second equation first because it says if they have 33 bills in total. Well, if you take the number of $5 bills and you add the number of $10 bills, that, would, that must be equal to 33 bills in total. So I think the first equation, I'm just going to name, uh, label it. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to say this equation is the number of bills equation. Okay, so the number of $5 bills plus the number of $10 bills is equal to 33 bills in total. So I'm going to go ahead and box this and we'll call it equation number one. The other equation I can form is based on the value of the bills. Okay, so I'm going to call it the value of the bills. Now here's what we know. If you take the value of the $5 bills and you add the value of the $10 bills, it must be equal to 260. So here's, I'm going to write the equation out and I'll explain kind of like how this works. So I'm going to write down 5x. Now remember, x is the number of $5 bills. So if I take the number of $5 bills and multiply by 5, that's the value of all those $5 bills in total. Okay, because each $5 bill has a value of $5. Plus 10y. So y represents the number of $10 bills. If you multiply by 10, that gives you the value of all your $10, uh, $10 bills combined. And that must be equal to 260. So again, just to kind of uh, reiterate this, 5 times x is... That's the value of all your $5 bills together because the value of the $5 bills be the number of $5 bills you have multiplied by $5. 10Y is the value of all your $10 bills. So 
So that'd be the number of $10 bills you have multiplied by $10 per bill. And that total must be 260. Okay, so I'm going to box this equation. We call it equation number two. Let's stack these two equations and then let's solve the system. So we'd have x plus y equals 33. And then we'd have 5x plus 10y is 260. The nice thing here is that uh, the, uh, the equations are already in the correct format. Now, to solve by elimination, you can do it in one step. All you need to do is multiply the top equation by uh, either 5 or multiply the top equation by 10. Okay, so let's eliminate uh, x. So I'll, I'll multiply the top equation by 5 to do that. So multiply by 5. And then I'd have 5x plus 5y would be equal to, uh, that should be 165. And then 5x plus 10y is equal to 260. Now that the coefficients for the y are the same, we can actually just subtract these two equations to eliminate x. So 5x minus 5x is 0. 5y minus 10y would be negative 5y. And then 165 minus uh, 260 would be negative 95. So then I'm left with 5y is equal to negative 95. Get y by itself. So we can divide the top equation by negative 5. Bottom equation by negative 5. Negative 5s cancel. And then you would have y is equal to 19. Okay, that's a number of $10 bills. To get the value of x, we're just going to take this value of y and sub it into equation 1 because that's the easier one to deal with. So I'll say sub y equals 19 into equation 1. So now I'd have x plus y is equal to 33. So we're going to replace y with 19. And then this would be x plus 19 is equal to 33. And then just to get the x by itself, minus 19, minus 19. And then I'd have x is equal to 14. And that's the number of $5 bills. Uh, if you want to double check and make sense of this, I mean, not that you have to actually do this, but if you use the second equation here, so basically, uh, the if you want $5 times the number of $5 bills, which is uh, 14, plus $10 times the number of $10 bills, which is 19. This would actually be equal to 260, okay? Uh, I don't think you necessarily need, yeah, it doesn't hurt to verify. I mean, you could verify the top equation as well, which is pretty simple, 14 plus 19 is 33, but the verification is a good way just to make sure that you've actually done this correctly. One more. Okay, it says Laura invested her inheritance in two different mutual funds, uh, $48,000. At the end of one year, she had earned 10.5% in interest. Now, I'm going to immediately convert these uh, percentages to decimal numbers. 
So 10.5% as a decimal would be divided by 100, which is going to be 0 0.105. And the other uh, fund had an interest rate of 0 0.12%. Okay, it says if she received a total of 5520 in interest, how much did she invest in each fund? Okay, so that's what we don't know. We don't know how much money that she invested into each one of these funds. So that's going to be my two unknown variables. So I'll say let X equal the amount of money invested in fund number one. And we'll let Y equal the amount of money invested in fund number two. So let's read the first equation. Uh, the first sentence says she invested her uh, inheritance of $48,000 into two mutual funds, which basically means if you take the amount of money invested in fund one plus the amount of money invested in fund two, that has to add up to $48,000. Okay. Uh, we'll call that like the, well, let's write it down first. We'll say X plus Y must be equal to 48,000. We'll call this equation the amount invested equation. The second equation we're going to write is the equation that's going to identify how much interest we made. And here's how we'll write it. Okay. It says at the end of one year, fund one had earned 10.5% of interest. So 10.5% of interest would be 10.5% of X plus the second fund earned 12% of interest of the amount of money you put into that fund. So 12% of Y. And that would be equal to 5520. Now I'm going to turn that this is kind of like an abbreviated sentence here. This is not my mathematical equation. So if, if, you, if you find a percentage of a number, uh, it's the same thing as like taking that percentage as a decimal and multiplying. So this equation would be 0 0.105 X. Okay. That's 10.5% of X, which is the amount of money put uh, invested in fund one plus 12% of the second one. So that'd be 0 0.12 of Y. And you add the interest made uh, for each of these funds. And this would be five, five, two, zero. So that's my second equation. So I'll go ahead and box that. Let's call this first one equation one, second one equation two. Let's stack the equations now. So the first equation would be X plus Y is equal to 48,000. The second equation would be 0 0.105x plus 0 0.12y is equal to 5520. Adding or subtracting right now will not eliminate a variable, but I can easily just multiply the first equation by a decimal number to make this work. So let's say we want to eliminate x. So I'll multiply the top equation just by 0 0.105. That would then give you uh, 0 0.105x plus 0 0.105y 
And then if you take 48,000 and multiply by 0 0.105, that would be 5040. Second equation, 0 0.105x plus 0 0.1. 1, 2, y is equal to 5, 5, 2, 0. Okay, to get rid of x, let's subtract the two equations. So minus, put the bracket there to remind me to subtract everything. Okay, 0 0.105x minus 0 0.105x, that's the elimination that occurs. Okay, this next one's going to be a negative number. Point one oh five minus point one two would be negative zero point zero one five y, and that would be five zero four zero minus five five two zero, which would be negative four hundred and eighty. To get y by itself, just divide both sides of the equation by the coefficient in front of y. So divide by negative 0 0.015, divide by negative 0 0.015, and that would be divide by negative 0 0.015. It's going to give you 32,000. Okay, so oh, let's do this in blue. Okay, so y in this cancel. Y would be $32,000. To get X, pretty easy. Throw it back into equation one. So I'll say sub Y equals 32,000 into equation one to get X. Okay, so equation one is x plus y equals 32,000. So we're going to replace y. Oh, sorry, x plus y is 48,000. That's what the first equation is. 48,000. And then... Y is 32,000, so we're going to do that substitution now. So then this would be X plus 32,000 is equal to 48,000. And if you just subtract 32,000 from both sides, minus 32,000, minus 32,000, you would get 16,000. Sixteen thousand in fund number one, sixteen thousand in fund number two. Okay. In the next lesson, we'll uh, look at. Uh, we're going to break it into a couple of different parts. There, there's some the uh, the more di the word problems are more difficult, uh, but for now, you can practice this by completing. Starting on page six forty three. Numbers one, two, six, seven, and nine, and there's no need to verify. I mean, you can verify just by quickly plugging into your calculator, but no need to show the work for it here. It's already enough work with uh, setting the word problem up. And I'll talk to you in the next lesson.